Hello everyone, and welcome to Paint Night with UConn alumni. My name is Emily Osher murray and I'm the Director of Alumni Relations for the School of Fine Arts. I have the pleasure of introducing our painting instructor for this evening, Erin Lee. Erin is a School of Fine Arts alumna who has been teaching art for the past 20 years. She also started her own business seven and a half years ago called Paint Sip Fun with the mission to educate, entertain, inspire, and empower all her students in a fun social setting. Should you have any questions tonight, please type them into the chat or Q&A. This session is being recorded should you need extra time to finish your picture. Also, make sure to share your finished picture on social media with us by tagging at UConn alumni or hashtag UConn together. And with that, thank you all for coming. Have fun. Hello everyone. Welcome. I'm so excited to be here with you guys again. Go Huskies. Um, I'm excited to be here again. My name is Erin Lee. I'm the owner, founder, and principal artist of Paint Sip Fun. And today I'm going to show you guys how to draw and paint this lovely picture. Um, Emily, do you know who took the photo? I know it's another alum, correct? Do not. I apologize. Oh, okay. I thought you had that ahead of time. So we'll get that to you because we do definitely want to give credit um, to the photographer. It's a beautiful photo. So um, today, like I said, I'm going to teach you guys how to draw and paint. So if you're going to draw with me, um, you're going to need a piece of paper. You're going to need a pencil and something to color with. Uh, so you can do pencils, you can do crayons, you can do, I would not suggest markers, um, but you can do chalk pastels, oil pastels like cray paws. Those work really good. I'm just going to use some um, heavy duty crayons to get this effect with you today. If you're going to paint with us, I'm going to do it on a canvas. My canvas is 16 by 20, but you can paint it on anything you want, really. If you have cardboard, you've got a piece of wood, or you have a canvas, that would work, okay? You also are going to need, let me just angle this down a little bit. There we go. You're going to need your paints. All right. So I have black and white and brown. Okay. Black, white, brown. And then I have the primary colors. And then I, I brought a green too. So um, blue, green, yellow, red. Those are the typical colors. If you don't have green, that's okay. We can mix it. All right. But at the very least, blue, yellow, red, black, white, brown. And even you don't even need brown. We can mix that if you don't have that either. Okay. Um, you're also going to need some water to wash your brush off in. You're going to need a napkin of some sort to dry your brush with. You're also going to need, I have a palette here. You can use a paper plate. You can use a piece of glass, something that's slick that the paint will not absorb into. Um, again, this is a paper palette that I'm going to be using. All right. So go ahead and grab your supplies while I get set up here with my paints. Just kind of push your paints out a little bit. We're going to start with the background, and I'm going to start with the canvas. Okay, we want the paint to dry, so um, I'm going to jump back and forth from the canvas to the paper. Now, if you, whoops, if you have questions, please type them into the chat bar, and please understand. Hold on, here we go. Sorry, please understand that there's a slight delay. So um, if you type a question in, one of the girls in the office is going to then verbalize it to me, but I might be a little ahead of you. So just bear with us on that. All right. We will get to you. I will answer all questions. And like they said, if uh, I am going to be going a little bit faster than normal, we have two hours in which to do both of these. So, I have a red. Um, so, if I get way ahead of you, what I'm going to suggest is you guys just pause and keep watching, stop painting or drawing, then come back to it in another day or two when we post the video to then take your own time to do this. All right, I'm just going to fix my window here. There we go. All right, so, like I said, I'm going to start with the canvas. Oh, you're also going to need paintbrushes, by the way. I forgot to tell you that. That would help. All right, not better. All right, so I typically use um, this painting. I'm doing four paintbrushes, all right, and this is what they are according to the size of my hand, all right. So this is about a one inch flat brush. These two are basically the same exact brush. One is just old and fluffy, 
<laughs> one is new, okay? This is what I call the mommy brush. And then this one here is a detail brush baby. So daddy, mommy, baby is what I refer to it, okay? Technically a number 10 flat, number six round, okay? And again, one is brand new, one is old and fluffy. And then this is a number one round, okay? So we're gonna start off with our big flat brush, okay? We're gonna mix, oh yeah, type A personalities, which I am one, by the way. <laughs> we wanna know what's gonna happen and how we'll be doing it, what order. Um, so we're gonna start with the background of the sky. We're gonna do a pale blue down to a pale yellow. And it's gonna come down to about here, okay? About three quarters of the way down. And then we're gonna do some green down this left side. That's step one, all right? And we're gonna get all of that done in 30 minutes, okay? After we do that, we're then gonna do the barn, the first phase of the barn, which is the background of the barn, meaning don't do the details, don't do the windows, that sort of thing, okay? So the barn, all right? Then the last step is going to be the details. We'll add the tree, at the end, we'll add all of the detailing of the barn. And this is the absolute last, very last thing we're gonna do, which is the grass. Okay, so type A's, now you kind of have an itinerary of what we're gonna do. All right, so with your paintbrush and your palette, you're gonna mix a baby, baby blue. So grab a big chunk of white. Anytime you mix a paint color, put it somewhere else on your palette. That way we keep these colors as intact as we can, okay? So a big chunk of white, little bit of blue, and I'm gonna mix right here. Whoop, can't hold it too, too much on an angle, I'm gonna drip. All right, so really baby, baby blue, okay? Really pale. And I'm gonna start adding pale blue. Doesn't matter how you paint, hopefully you guys can see that, okay? Um, doesn't matter how you apply the color, you can go up and down, side to side, left to right, crisscross, which is what I typically do. You're just going to apply some baby blue to the sky. Probably about mm, the top quarter or so is going to be baby blue, okay? As you paint, anytime you get to the edge of your canvas, go right around. I want you to paint the top, the sides, and eventually also the bottom, okay? So this entire thing will be completely painted and it'll look finished. You're not gonna have to frame it if you don't want to. Unlike this one that I didn't paint. So if you're walking down the hallway and you see the painting, you see the unfinished edge. It doesn't look as polished. But if it's all finished and painted all the way around, it has a nice finished edge, okay? All right, and again, I know I'm gonna go a little bit fast. If it gets frustrating, especially for my type A's, I'm gonna suggest that you just stop painting for tonight or do the best you can and then come back and watch the video later, okay? All right, so you have your pale blue right here. While this is wet, I am going to start mixing in a little bit of white at the bottom. This blends your blue and gives it sort of like an ombre uh, um, effect. So it doesn't just have an abrupt stop line. If you notice, I kind of just blended it right on out, okay? That's what we want because the next color I'm gonna do is a pale yellow. And if you have blue right next to yellow, it turns green. We don't want green in our sky. So as soon as I'm done with this blue into white, I'm gonna wash my brush proper way to wash it is to put it in your cup, your can, whatever you have, paint the bottom of the can, all right? You can't just swish your paintbrush around. It won't get the acrylic out of the bristles. You really gotta push the paint out and then you're gonna dry it off. These are acrylics that I'm using. They are not crazy about water. They turn really drippy really quickly. So I always wanna dry my brush off in between. All right, so I've got my pale blue. Now I'm gonna to go to pale yellow. So again, grab a big chunk of white, put it somewhere else on your palette, and a little bit of yellow. Now my yellow is pretty bright, it's pretty obnoxious actually. 
So I'm gonna have a lot of white on mine. So for the type A's that are asking what's the percentage of white to blue, excuse me, white to um, yellow, start off maybe 5% yellow, 95% white, start there and then work your way down, okay? There we go. I don't know if you guys saw, that's probably about what I have. And then you're just gonna start to, even that seems a little bit bright. So if that's too bright, which mine is, I'm gonna grab a chunk of white right here on my brush. I'm gonna go right at it and lighten it up right on my canvas. If it's still too bright, you can wash your brush and start again, okay? So now I'm just gonna mix this right up and into that white that I did, okay? So as you can see, it's not turning green because I have white right here, All right? So this top edge of my yellow fades into the white. And I'm gonna bring this yellowy color down, like I said, about three quarters of the way down my canvas. This whole thing down here is going to be barn, so I don't have to worry about covering it right now. And I want to make sure that behind my trees I have some sky showing, so that's why I'm bringing this down here. Again, I'm just doing it very, very lightly. It doesn't have to have a heavy coat because we're going to have lots of layers on top of this. So just get a nice, our goal here when we do the background is just to get rid of the white. Just get rid of the white canvas, just a little bit. Doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to look beautiful. In fact, this, this stage, it looks kind of messy and that's okay, all right? <clears throat> so I'm gonna start to, even though this is wet, I'm gonna start to grab some green and put some green in um, here, okay? So about halfway over. This section right here, I'm gonna do all of these trees, okay? So my brush doesn't have any much, much paint on it, on it anymore. Still a little bit, but not a lot. I'm gonna just go straight into my green, grab some green right on my brush, and I'm just gonna start doing little kind of circular motion, okay? So I have it a little bit higher on the left. This is the background of our trees, okay? We're going to come back in and give these a little bit more um, texture. So it will mix with your yellow a little bit. Even if it mixes with the blue, that's fine. Yellow and blue are green, make green. All right, so we're going to come over maybe a third of the way from the left because I'm going to put my silo right here. So I'm going to stop right where I'm going to do my silo, all right? So there we go. And I'm just going to lay in some green, doesn't have to be perfect. It's gonna be see-through, that's okay. Again, my goal right now is just to get rid of the white, that's it. Doesn't matter the texture, doesn't matter if you can see the brush strokes, just keep on trying, okay? Top edge, I'm gonna scrubble, scrumble they call it, right, scribble. Make it uneven because the tops of trees are uneven. And again, the rest of this, once it's dry, will be barn. Okay, so that's kind of what it looks like. There we go. See how messy? It's okay. Doesn't matter because this is the underpainting uh, of what we're doing. So I'm gonna let you guys work on that for a minute. And then we're going to come back and do some sky and barn. All right. So while you guys are working on your three colors, I'm going to jump over here and do the drawing. So if you're drawing with me, I need to do it in crayon so you guys can see it on camera. However, I want you to start off with pencil. All right. So you can erase it if you want to. So let me just get my rectangle drawn in here. There we go. And we get a straight rectangle. There we go, sort of. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is put the placement of our pieces, which basically is the silo and the barn. All right, so we're going to start with this rectangle right here. So I'm going to come up just a little bit and I'm going to draw a rectangle. This is the side of our barn. Okay. Sorry, 
I'm not having a very good time with this today. There we go. There we go. Rectangle right to the edge. All right, and this is about about a third. Okay, so the side of the barn is about a third ballpark of your drawing. All right, your paper. Now I know this is going to sound weird, but we're building the barn. Okay, we're not needed now. We're going to draw. Right here, we're gonna draw another rectangle. Not as wide as that one. Almost a square, but just a little longer. Okay. This is the front of our barn. And the angle that the photo was taken was perfect because there was no perspective, which is great. So this here, it doesn't look like it's on an angle going back, or the lines, it, so it was done absolutely perfectly to make it easy to draw. All right, so I was very excited when I saw that photo. Ha, so we have a rectangle, we have almost a square, all right? I want you to now find the midpoint. So draw a little, little dot halfway across our square, okay? This is gonna help us find our pitch of our roof, all right? This is, so draw a straight line up like that. <clears throat> we have, let's see, one and a half. So about a third of the height of your square, okay, so if you, about a third, okay, is how high the point of our barn is. Although any barn, you can build it however you want. This barn in particular, like I said, is about a third to half or so, okay? And there's our peak of our barn. Draw a triangle at the top there, okay? And then we're gonna draw a straight line this way. Now, if you notice, there's a lot of tree, okay, there's a lot of trees over here. So we don't have to worry about the end of our barn. We don't even have to worry about the bottom of our barn because it's gonna be hidden by all the grass, okay? So when we're painting it, again, we don't really have to pay much detail to that, all right? Now we're gonna draw our silo. I want you to draw this as a rectangle, thin rectangle. So let's see. It is about, what, two thirds of the width. So if you wanna measure about two thirds. All right. It's a little bit taller and it does sit in front of this, believe it or not, a little bit. You're doing this with pencil. And we all know that a silo is really a cylinder, but for simplicity, the way we color it, we're gonna make it look rounded, right? Like this looks rounded by shading, and I'll show you how to do that later. But, so you know, if, I mean, if you wanted to be perfect, you can curve this down here. And again, the angle that this photo was taken, believe it or not, this looks straight across. It's an illusion, but we know that it's rounded. So if you just kind of want to curve that at the bottom, you can do that, all right? Same trick, we're gonna come across here, find the midpoint, go straight up, and we are going to give this another triangle at the top for the roof. Triangle at the top of that rectangle. If you gently, again, with pencil, want to mark out where your trees are gonna go very, very lightly, I like to sort of scribble. I don't know if you noticed, it's, I can't pull this close to the camera, it's all kind of taped up, but I scribble. I do sort of this kind of a line, which is literally a scribble, but do it very lightly so it's not a straight edge and it can be very organic when it comes to your trees, right? And that's pretty much it for now, because we can always add that, this other tree in there later, all right? Um, actually, you know what, let's do it now. <laughs> I decided. All right, so again, sort of scribbly, right? I wanna make sure that my tree comes to about here on my roof. So I'm gonna scribble up, making sure it's uneven, right? Because Trees never have any real straight lines to them. They're all very organic and um, uneven and 
tumbly and you know, leafy, I guess is the real word for it. Okay, so we're gonna just do the edge of our tree. If you wanna just keep looking back at the original, you can sort of do that kind of a thing. Okay, so that's the layout of our drawing. All right, to get you guys coloring, you're gonna pick up your crayons, the colors that you want. Oh God, is this purple? That's a deep blue, good. It's hard to tell. Um, pick up the colors of the crayons that you want. So in this instance, I'm going to, we're not gonna draw and color in layers, okay? So we are going to be mindful, just getting my colors out and I have to rip them apart because I gotta take the wrappers off of them. I'll show you why in a second. But um, when you're coloring this, we're not gonna color it in layers like we're painting, okay? Excuse me, let me just drop my crayon. <clears throat> we are going to do them individually. So pick up your blue, yellow, like a pinky color or an orangey color, salmon, salmon color, whatever you have. You can always mix it too, by the way. <clears throat> and then, so yeah, blue, yellow, purple, pink, and orange, or salmon, right? If you're having, if you're doing this with, oh my God, I like it. If you're doing this with oil pastels, it'll mix a lot better and you can smudge it and you do really heavy layers of your oil pastels and they'll blend nicely like oil paint. It's really kind of cool. All right, what time do we have here? Just wanna keep, keep going, make sure I'm on schedule so we don't go over. All right, so you're going to very carefully scribble, and I'm using the side of my crayons, scribble in where you see, I'm just gonna do a little bit of yellow. I'm gonna do it pretty heavy so you guys can see it because I don't think you can see my light color, okay? All right, there we go. And I know that it blends and off into nothing, right? Because I'm gonna change to blue. There's only a little bit of yellow at the bottom. This, come on. These are, like I said, they're heavy duty crayons, they're hard to break. All right, I'm gonna do a little bit of blue. And I, mean, I do, when I color, everything that I'm coloring, I'm gonna color it in a different way. So anytime I'm doing the trees, I'm doing this kind of a scribble, scrumble kind of an effect. When I do the barn, I'm gonna go left and right as if it were um, siding, right? The sky, I'm doing more of a side to side, still a scribble, but more of a smooth scribble, if you can sort of picture that. And I'm using the side of the crayon to do it with, to get a nice smooth effect in the sky, okay? So I did a little bit of yellow at the bottom, do, making sure that I don't get green by doing yellow and blue together. You don't wanna do that, okay? So be careful of that. <clears throat> And then you're just gonna go back and forth with your clouds in the same way, scribble it, all right? You just gotta get the right colors, there we go. You take a little bit, you start with the lighter colors. So whenever you're doing kind of puffy clouds like this, you wanna start with your lighter shade. So in this instance, if you notice the bottom is kind of yellowish, so I'm gonna make sure I get some yellow. Scribble the side of the crayon to do your clouds. This is, this is the color I'm gonna do my clouds. Circular, scribble with the side of the crayon. All right, so if I do the purple up here, I'm gonna start at the, you do purple at the top just so you can see it. All right. Then you're gonna overlay the purple with sort of that, pink. I have pink here. So I'm gonna do sort of a little bit of pink and you overlay blend by getting uh, layers. And again, side of your crayon, scribble, scribble. And I'm only gonna do a couple clouds over here. Okay, grab my orange a little bit, break it so I can use the side of it. Sorry, I thought these crayons were already peeled until I opened them just now, there we go. So we get some orange going on here. And you can have some darker areas too, if you'd like. You have to be careful that if you do orange on top of blue, 
You want to, it will turn into sort of a mushy brown. You got to be very careful of that. You want to do the orange in and on some of the white part of your paper, okay? Or on the yellow part, because orange and yellow blend nicely together. And you can push a little harder in some areas to get, let me see if I can pull this. Oh, God, I can't. I thought it was nailed down, okay? Hopefully you guys can see that. That way, there we go. All right, so I'm literally just using the side of the crayon and smushing it, smudging it, blending it on top of the other colors. So I used purple, pink, orange, and then you can also use for the clouds. So that's purple, pink, and orange for the clouds. The sky was yellow and blue, but I only did some of this, only what you saw, right, through the clouds. Don't do the blue and yellow in here when you're coloring. You only do the yellow down here and the blue up there. Hopefully that makes sense. All right. I know, like I said, I know I'm going kind of fast, not giving you guys a boatload of time, but you're going to have to come back and watch it later um, if, if you're missing anything. All right. So I'm going to leave that as is. Let you guys play with that. Work on your sky. My painters, we too are going to now pay, play with our sky, all right? Grab your, I'm going to grab that really fat, where did I put it? There it is. That really fat, fluffy mommy brush, okay? And I'm going to do the clouds with what we call more of a dry brush technique, which means you're going to put paint on the brush. You're then going to wipe it off, you're, meaning you're not going to have a lot of paint on your brush. You're going to do it mostly dry, all right? With paint, however, we're gonna start with the lighter color at the bottom of the clouds and then work our way up to the darker colors, okay? Crayons, you're doing it a little differently. But here, we're gonna start with that pale, yellowy, orange color. Now, how do we mix that, that salmon kind of color? You're gonna take yellow and white, which I already have here, and you're gonna add a little bit of red. And when I say a little, I mean a little no more than 2% red to this combination of yellow and white over here, okay? So I had that pale yellow that was here, right? And I'm adding 2% red to it. So you're starting out with this kind of pale pinkish orangey color. And if it's too pink, add a little yellow. If it's too yellow, add a little, and I mean a little red, okay? I can't stress enough how strong red is of a color and how potent it is. Start with so little. All right, there we go. That's a nice orangey kind of a color. So I have all this paint on my brush now. I don't want that much. So I'm going to try and squeeze it off as best I can, squeeze it out. I'm spinning my brush and pushing it so it comes out. I'm going to wipe it on my, my napkin just a little. And I'm going to do the same sort of technique like this, scribble, to the point where I'm running out of paint on my brush. I'm gonna continue scribbling to push the paint and make it really, really dry. So I wanna show you something really quickly. The edges of my clouds are really, really, really um, blurry, right? All of them are really blurry. That's, I get that, from having almost no paint on the brush, okay? So start with, start with as little as you can, and you're going to do the same effect. Like I had a big chunk right there for some reason. So I'm just gonna keep going. And you may even hear the, scrub, the scrubbing. Your brush may end up kind of scrubbing. There we go. And I'm gonna scrub out the edges so it gets blurry. Hopefully you guys can see that. My background has little bits in it, you know, little chunks. I'm sorry about that. I used an old canvas and that's you're seeing sort of the painting underneath it. I didn't mean to do that. All right. Grab the wrong, wrong canvas. All right. So you get some orange. I'm going to go in sort of a random, random way. You can also change the direction of your cloud. And I have a little bit of an orange cloud up here too. You can also change the color. For example, I'm gonna add just a smidge, and I mean a smidge, teeny tiny, 
bit of red to make this cloud a little more deep salmon, right? More of a, yeah, just a darker orangey salmon color. I think it's gonna look a little better than that bright orange. I want it more of a red orange. There you go. Tiny bit of red into that mixture. Here we go. Okay, see the difference it made there? All right. And you can even add this sort of color on top. So we're gonna kind of model these and build it up and smush it and just keep working it, leaving, making sure you leave some of the blue sky, you leave some of the yellow at the bottom here. Maybe I'll do a little bit of orange over here. Knowing full well, this is gonna be my silo right here. And then the barn is over here with the big tree. So I don't have to go too very far over here. But I am going to smudge and blend and scrub my edges of my clouds so they get really blurry, okay? Really blurry. The photo, actually, it's really blurry in the photo, too. Okay, so I did the orange peachy color. Now I'm going to make, so the orange, right, sorry. Then you're going to do sort of a little bit of that more reddish sunburn color, maybe. Okay, a little bit of that on top. So you still see the orange in spots, right? So this is more of that orangey salmon color. Then I added a little bit more of the pink sort of on top of it. All right, now I'm going to go make a purple. If you have purple paint, awesome. If not, you make it by mixing red and blue, all right? So I'm gonna wash my paintbrush real quick. Scrub it at the bottom, dry it off. I'm gonna make a purple. So I'm gonna start off with red and blue. And this you're gonna want probably 40% blue, 60% red, excuse me, 40% red, 60% blue, ballpark-ish, depending on it depends on the shade of blue that you have. All right, this is called an ultramarine blue. So this is a little bit more powerful than say a cobalt. You gotta just play with it. Find a purple that you like. You can actually hold it up to, you know, the painting and say, hmm, does that look like, it's fairly, it's kind of reddish. So I'm gonna bring in a little bit more blue. And you just go back and forth with it to try and play. There we go, a much prettier purple. And again, so I have my deep purple. Again, I'm gonna wipe it almost all off, okay? As much as I can, save my paint. Just push it right out of the bristles. Wipe it on my napkin, because I only want a wee little bit of paint, right? Especially if it's a dark color. And again, I'm going to just scribble and push it in. And try not to have much paint at all. And you can blend this right in to that pinky color. And this, I'm gonna put these more on top of the clouds, okay? Because the sun's gonna be over here lighting up the bottom of the clouds. So from the point, point of view of the camera, we're seeing the top side of the cloud opposite the sun. So it's pretty dark up there. All right, so I'm just gonna sort of and you, again, you blend your edges so you don't see where the paint starts and stops, okay? So that's the most important part is to use, and again, this is dry brush technique. Scrub, scrub, scrub. And up here. more paint. Brown, brown, hang on. So this way you blend your edges so you don't see where one color starts and the other one stops. It just kind of blends into each other, okay? Okay, so this, like I said, this is called dry brush dry brush technique. I'm gonna put a little bit of purple on this cloud and then we're done with this. All right. 
So go ahead and wash your mommy brush. Again, here's what it looks like up close. A hot mess of scribbly brush strokes, okay? So if it looks messy, you did it right. So as we're going, you guys, first of all, go ahead and wash your brush, all right? Um, you're sitting, keep something in mind, you're sitting 12 inches from your canvas, which looks totally different than what mine looks on camera, all right? So you're seeing mine from far away. So you guys are also going to need to get a new perspective on your painting or your drawing, depends on whatever you're working on, especially your painting. So two ways to do that. One, take a picture of your canvas on your smartphone and look at it, looking at it that way because it shrinks it down and gives you a new perspective. The other way you can do it is to get up, stop staring at your canvas for a minute or two, walk down the hallway a little bit, get at least 20 feet from it, and then look back at it and then assess it. If you're really sick and tired of it, stop working for five, 10 minutes, go get a drink, go to the bathroom, go do something else, go for a walk outside, then come back and look at it with the new fresh eyes, okay? Because again, sitting this close to it, it's a hot mess. Looking at it from far away, you're like, oh, it's not so bad, <laughs> okay? Um, and all of us artists go through the same process of, mm, I don't know if it looks right, whatever, and then the new perspective helps us like it a little bit more. All right, so the last phase of this is to do textured brushes, um, bushes or trees. Do you all remember Bob Ross, Happy Little Trees? That's what we're gonna be doing, okay? So we're gonna literally do this. I right? dot, 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 dot. You're gonna want to go between a green and a green with yellow, so a lighter green. And down here, I did green with a little bit of brown in it. So as I'm going, I'm going back and forth between green, a light green and a dark green. The light green is green with yellow. The dark green is green with brown, just a little bit. So go ahead and mix those colors up. So there's my green. I'm gonna grab some yellow. I'm gonna mix it a little bit over here. So mix sort of a yellowy green, a little bit more. Okay, so there's sort of my lighter green. Get it off my brush. And then I'm gonna bring in and do some brown on this side to do a darker green. Okay. You guys can see this. All right, so now I have three shades of green. A yellowy green, regular green, and a darker green. Okay. I'm gonna start with my darker green because it's on my brush. I don't wanna waste paint. And I'm gonna start with dot, 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 okay? And you can push pretty hard and pretty big on this all the way down. And it's okay if some of this green sort of shows through a little bit. So you do a chunk of dark. Then as you're going, you're gonna grab, oh, it's hard to see, there we go. Some other green also, and you sort of mix it in. Blend it in, smush it in. This gives it the texture. How you paint it also gives it, like I said, the texture of what it is that we're trying to convey. In this case, trees and bushes. All right, so this whole section, I'm just doing the same concept of mixing these colors back and forth right, irregularly. Try not to have straight lines like a big square of dark green and then another square of regular green and then another square of the yellowy green. You want to go back and forth naturally. So down here I pushed really, really, really hard. Up here I'm going to push lightly. By doing that, you give it even more texture and it looks like the edges of the trees and the sky sort of showing through the leaves. Okay. So anytime I get sort of toward the edge, you do little teeny tiny baby dabs. Again, I'm going back and forth between regular green, light green, maybe a little dark green at times too. Now I know this edge is gonna be my silo, so I don't have to worry about this edge as much. I know I'm going fast again. If you guys need to re-watch the video later, that's fine. I'm just trying to stay in our two-hour time frame. 
but at least this way you guys understand how to get these done. So here's something that I'm going to offer you guys. Um, if you are doing this with the replay later, or you have a question after class, even if you finish it with me now and you have a question after class, go ahead and email the girls. They're going to give you the school email, Emily or Lauren. And they're, I'm going to say if they want to forward me any emails, I'm more than happy to help you afterwards. Okay, I I'm, I'm, I'm want to be more as much one-on-one -on -one with you guys as I can, answering any of your questions. Um, if you want to work on this further and you have more questions and you're concerned about it, I'm here to help. Just email the girls and they'll forward it to me. Okay? I hope that's all right, Emily. <laughs> I just volunteered you. So just add in a little bit of variety between your light green, regular green, dark green. Where's the light? There we go. A little better. All right? Yeah, it looks a little better. Okay? Perfect. So you guys work on that, the sky, work on the trees, and I'm going to get back over to our drawing. Okay? When you're done with that, go ahead and wash your brush. We're right on time, I think. All right, so let's work on, you guys did this barn with pencil. So now let's do it with crayon. You guys, yours is gonna look so much better because again, you have crayon, uh, pencil that you've erased. You can erase these lines. I can't erase my black crayon, unfortunately. So, all right, let's work on the barn. The barn, believe it or not, it's not all red, right? It's red on this side and it's a dark red on this side. So red with brown. Let me just grab my brown, grab my red. So red and brown crayons. This one here, I'm gonna use the side of it and I'm gonna rub it left and right. Again, to mimic the um, Siding. I couldn't think of the word for a minute there. Sorry about that. All right, so you're gonna go left and right to mimic the siding, okay? I'll try not to go into the tree, my bad. I went too far, sorry about that. But if you go left and right, you're gonna have the edge of the crayon that sort of makes it a little darker. That gives it some texture. Or you can come in with the edge of your crayon and do lines. If you're more of the type A, wants to, want to be exact, you can absolutely use a ruler and do this. Or you don't have to if you want to be more free. Just go horizontally with it, okay? Now, you're also going to want to, like I said, erase your lines and leave this line here white. Leave it the white of the paper. Okay, leave this the white of the paper and that the white of the paper. If you have some kind of paint or white out even or um, white nail polish, you can put the white on top of your crayon work later. But if you don't have any of that, you got to color within the lines and make sure that um, you don't color what's going to be white. So if that's the case and you don't have anything white to paint with on top of the crayon, you're going to want to draw in the windows and the door first and then only color outside of those. If that makes sense. Okay. So let's draw in with pencil very lightly a rectangle that goes fairly high up, two thirds, if not more of the way up. And it's going to be dead center. So that center line that we drew originally is also going to cut this door in half. Okay. So it goes right through the center of that door, all right? And then there's two windows that are actually, believe it or not, above and inside this triangle up here. So try to make your windows the same. They are the width in this picture. They are, go from the width of the door, this here. If you wanted to draw little guidelines for you, they are no wider than the door down below. They're really tiny and they're identical up here, okay? And you can even draw the window panes in it. So draw that very lightly with a pencil so that way we know whenever we color with crayon, we're not gonna mark 
We're not going to color on the paper. We're going to leave it white of the paper. Okay. All right. Hopefully that made sense. So now we're going to do the siding on the front. Same way. Color the red left to right. I'm using the side of the crayon to get some texture and get those lines to kind of look like siding. Feel free to draw in some darker red horizontal lines. Even between the windows and all the way up here, you still want to go left to right. Don't change the direction of your coloring. Okay? It's very important to keep the same pattern of coloring consistent throughout that entire shape or that entire section. Okay? Now, you can push really hard on this if you want to. You can leave it lighter so it's a faded barn if it's, you know, more um, pale color, sort of a faded red barn. But to make this side of the barn look darker, I'm going to add brown to it. Oh, forgot. This door, the barn pieces go up and down. The door has wood that does this. So this time, go up and down with your crayon. And my painters, we're going to be painting this in a similar fashion, left to right on the side, up and down on the door, okay? By doing it in a different direction, it gives it a different texture. It's pretty kind of, it's kind of cool, actually. All right, so to make this side darker, add some brown on top. Add another layer. Not too, too dark. We just want to darken it down a little bit. But again, you have to go left to right so it gives the illusion of siding, okay? Always important how you color it. Right, the clouds, we did spirals on the side. The siding, we're doing the side, but we're going up and down. Or you can use the tip of the crayon and go up and down this way if you'd like to do that too. Right. You can do brown or black for the roof. I'm going to do brown and black. Start with my brown and I'm going to go left to right with my brown. And that's what I did up there. It's a very dark brown. Again, make sure you have nice straight lines. So it gives the illusion of um, roofing tiles, shingles. You can go as light as dark as you want. You can add more texture by adding more lines. Completely up to you, okay? And hopefully your lines here, mine are black, hopefully yours are white, okay? Roof over here, I'm gonna do black and I'm gonna color it. The way you color this one is you're gonna color it in that sort of a fashion, okay? So I need to go up and down in that way, all the way around, and it makes it look more like a cone, okay? Nice long lines. A little darker on this side and you're good to go, okay? Silo. I'm gonna use two shades of brown and I'm gonna show you a trick to make it look 3D. Think of the shape of a sm slight smile. Okay, let's break this, there you go. All right, so again, side of the crayon, you're gonna want to do a smile. And okay, hopefully you can see that. Start with the lighter color. All right, on the left, you're going to do, you're going to start on the left and you're going to go smile, right? We're doing smiles. If you want some texture, draw some lines in to sort of give the illusion that these are bricks or some kind of stones, more of a brick stone, which I think is what the picture, it, real, the real silo is. I think it's brownstone. 
Not sure, but it's definitely bricks, okay? So we're doing it in this slight smile shape. And then the darker color, we're gonna come in only from the right side in the same direction. So you're only gonna color half the silo, so half a smile coming in from the right. This is gonna give the illusion. I'm kind of flicking it too, by the way, guys. It's kind of a flick. Start with a really dark line, flick in a half a smile as it goes across. And this is how we're gonna paint it too. So if you guys ever get to painting, it's the same concept, okay? That's how you make it look 3D, okay? It's that half a smile coming in all from the right. And actually in the picture, I just noticed it's the barn is darker over there too. So go ahead and add some dark coming in from the left, flicking to the right on your siding. Forgot about that. Always coming in the same way that the texture is, right? So this texture is a smile, this texture on the barn is a straight line to the right. So blend those in also. Much darker brown, or if you want to go to sort of a black, you can do that also. Okay, there you go. So now it looks like these two come in and it's darker in there. All right, so you guys can play with that. I'm gonna get back to um, our painters. Where's my pencil? There it is. All right, painters, hopefully you have a pencil because we're gonna now draw our barn like we did over here. I'm going to, however, instead of having it lifted up here, I'm gonna bring it all the way down to the bottom, all right? It's much easier and when the grass comes over, we're just gonna make a slightly taller barn, all right? So we're gonna draw a rectangle here. Hopefully, can you see that? Nope. All right, let me do it with cramp. All right. I'm gonna draw a rectangle over here. And it's about, there we go. I guess it's a square then because we're leading up to, so if this was the barn that I had them draw, right? This is the rectangle. And then I had them draw a square, right? So that's what we're gonna do, a rectangle and a square. We're gonna have, when we paint it, we're gonna bring it all the way down uh, behind the grass, okay? So a rectangle and a square. And then we gotta figure out where our roof is gonna be, okay? So halfway across the top of the square, put a little line right in the middle. I'm gonna draw it up here. And then you're going to draw your perfect triangle on top, okay? Sorry, I didn't draw that dark enough. Then take from here straight to the right. Our silo is gonna start in front of our barn a little bit. You're gonna draw a rectangle or you can curve the bottom like a smile shape if you'd like. Okay, so it goes on top of our barn a little bit. And again, we're going to measure the center of our rectangle to figure out the roof of the silo. Now, if by chance, you're drawing on top of the green and it's not dry. Stop. Go dry it with a hair dryer, okay? Mine is dry. Totally forgot to, to tell you guys, use a hair dryer anytime you can to dry it before you get to the next stage. This all should be completely dry before you do this, okay? Should have said that to you. My bad, and I'm sorry about that. So make sure it's dry. Go ahead and draw this, <clears throat> and then we're going to paint it, okay? All right, we have 
Big Daddy brush, that big flat brush. I'll show you in a second. I'm going to wash it and dry it. All right, this one here. I'm going to first start by drawing, or excuse me, painting bright red left and right, right across the side of this barn. Okay. Now I know that you're going to see through the red. That's okay. We're going to come back here in a little bit and we're going to add another texture to it more red paint to give it sort of that weathered barn look, okay? But again, you wanna go left and right. There go. And the same thing with the front of the barn. We're gonna start, actually we're doing our darker red. Same left and right, but this time we're doing it with a dark red. So I had the bright red just now. I am now going to make dark red, red with a little bit of brown in it. Okay, sorry, you can see that. There we go. Ooh, dripping. There we go. Now I'm going to go left and right with my dark red in here as best I can. You may want to move to a slightly smaller brush to be able to get this or just turn your brush on an angle. But you're still going horizontally left to right, okay? So if you notice I'm starting on the angle of the roof line and I'm dragging it straight across. Bring it across. Now we know from the, over here that the door of the barn, the, it goes vertically. So once I get this in and colored, painted, I'm going to come back in while the paint is still wet and I'm going to pull the paint in the opposite direction. Even though it's the same color, I'm gonna go in the opposite direction. This will make the doors look like they're built vertically as opposed to sideways, okay? So make sure you pull your paint in the correct direction in the correct section, okay? It does make a difference even though it's the same color, okay? Now I just realized I painted on top of the silo. So I'm gonna move right now while the paint is still wet and paint my silo. I'm gonna grab some brown. And I'm gonna paint right over that red. Again, your silo, you're gonna go left to right, okay? So we're doing a dark brown right now on the silo. And I'm gonna do that smile. Remember how I did it over here? Same thing, left to right, but I'm doing this smile shape. And it's a reddish brown, but it's a dark brown. So it's a darker color than the barn. Yes, you are gonna see through your paint. It's okay. I like to kind of give a straight edge down and then curve around, left and right, curve like a smile. I'm on the right, I pull it to the left and do half a smile this way. If I'm on the right, I'll pull to the right. Excuse me, if I'm on the left, I'll pull to the right with a half a smile. If I'm on the right, I'll pull to the left with half a smile. Hopefully that makes sense. Right. Now, you may want to do this in layers. And so if you watch the video replay, you might want to let, let it dry and come back and do another layer and come back and do another layer. That's fine too, all right? I'm just kind of giving you step-by-step -step directions. So there's the silo. I'm trying to get you the brush stroke so you can see it. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, like, sort of. No, nope. okay. <clears throat> but again, it's the same brush stroke. You start on the, if you start on the right, you're going to come down as a smile shape. 
it's like the bottom down here, okay? I'm gonna continue this silo all the way down into the edge here. All right, I forgot to do that. And I'm gonna color all of this brown in just a second. All right, there we go. It'll look better in the end when we're doing the grass on top of it. Okay, that's why I'm doing this. All right, so silo, come all the way down. Brown in this smile shape. And the barn, we're gonna do brown, the concrete, uh, the um, the sill, concrete sill, it's actually cinder blocks, I believe, but they're brown in the picture. So maybe they're brownstone, could be. We're gonna put the foundation of the barn all the way down, again, left to right. I know it looks a little tall, don't worry about it. We're gonna hide most of it with grass by the time we're done, okay? I just don't wanna have a start and a stop line where you see white versus red. It looks kind of silly at the end of the day. So we just wanna, again, get rid of the white, right? That's our trick for this. Doesn't have to be a thick coat, it could be streaky. Again, all of this brown on the bottom is going to be covered by grass, so the only goal is to get rid of white, okay? Does not have to be a thick coat at all. all right. And then now the roof. Still the same brush. This time I'm gonna do a dark brown. So brown with a little bit of black in it. And again, I'm so sorry that I'm going kind of fast. Feel free to watch the replay and pause it, okay? Especially if you're getting frustrated, don't get frustrated. And I'm here if you have any questions. Okay, all right. And you're going to color just that shape in. At any time, if you want to change brushes, you're more comfortable with a smaller brush go for it. There's no right or wrong way to do this, okay? There we go. If you get some streaks going in here, cool. It gives it some texture. It gives it more of the shingles look, the asphalt shingles, okay? There we go. Then this one over here, because it's smaller, I'm going to change to a slightly smaller brush, my other pointed brush. Okay. This one I'm going to do black with maybe a little bit of white on it to make it just a charcoal. Okay. My roof line does hang over a little bit. And believe it or not, even at this perspective, the bottom of this triangle is actually flat. Okay, so I'm gonna make it a little lighter on one side and the other. And again, I'm gonna paint it in this sort of a sun ray kind of a direction, all right? So right down the middle, it's gonna go straight down and it's gonna to start to angle out as it goes to the right. And it's gonna angle out this way as it goes to the left. So don't just kind of paint it any which way. You want to paint it in the direction of the texture of the, the roof line. And I think this is sort of a metal roof. So hopefully you can see that. Hopefully you can see the lines. I'll do it a little lighter for you. So those sort of the sun's rays from the top. It's the only way I can kind of describe it. Okay. Hopefully you can see that. I can't. Yeah, you can see it a little bit. Okay. All right. While you guys are finishing up that, I'm going to jump over to our picture over here, our paper friends. All right. So go ahead and grab now. We're going to do our trees. 
Similarly to how I had more than one color on the barn, I'm going to have more than one color on the trees up here too. Like we did with the painting, we had a yellowy green, a regular green, and a dark green, so green and brown. So that's exactly what I'm going to grab, yellow, green, and brown. Okay. I haven't used the green yet, got to peel it. Sorry, guys. All right, so. Yellow, green, and brown. If you have two shades of green, feel free to use the other shade too, which actually I do, so I might I'll pull that. So pull out whatever colors um, kind of match. Like I said, I'm gonna do a brighter green also. And I think I'm gonna start with that brighter green if I can get the paper off. I can't, oh well, I'm not using it. It's not wanting to, to work with me, so. I'll start with the yellow. All right, so I'm gonna start with the lightest color and then work my way down to a darker color, okay? So again, side of the crayon. You're gonna to want to use this sort of a fashion, just smaller, okay? And feel free to push harder in some areas, lighter in other areas. And you're gonna literally sort of scribble. I'm, I'm technically scribbling on the side of the crayon. Okay. You'll see it better when I do this. And you start with your lighter colors and then you build, build your layers with colors. And you can even push hard on the corners of your crayon to get a darker color of gray, green, or whatever color you're working on. Okay, but again, it's that scribbly, scribbly kind of a motion that you're going to do. This is more of a smooth kind of a scribble. This is more of a hard kind of a um, scribble. Now, I'm gonna layer this. So I'm gonna add lots of pushing. I'm pushing really, really hard. So those are two different things you can think about is how are you gonna apply the color? Straight lines, scribbles, whatever you're gonna do, zigzags. And how hard are you going to push? So when you're coloring with crayons, the lighter you go, the lighter the color. The darker, the darker the color, right? So here I'm pushing really, really hard. Up here I wasn't. So always think about when you're coloring, how hard do you want to push it and what texture, which, how, how do I want to apply it, right? So I'm going to do sort of a lot of dark at the, where I would think the bottom of the branches are. The top of the branches. I'm going to leave them sort of a little bit lighter, okay? You just kind of work this back and forth, back and forth. Now it does look like a hot mess, guys. Hot mess of scribbles. So just keep working it, blending it in. So now anytime you go back to an adult coloring book, you have some techniques on how to do it, okay? And how to work it and how to get some more um, textures, more variety. And now I'm moving into some brown. So anywhere it's really, really dark green, I'm gonna add a little bit of brown at the bottom of it just to kind of break it up a little bit. Okay, so just keep working it, keep moving it. Let some of the yellow kind of pop through a little bit to make it a lighter green. Again, if you have a couple other shades of green, add those in there too. Making sure that your edges are really um, blurry. Lack of a better way to say that. You want it to be really blurry. So your pressure is gonna change. Your colors are gonna change, but how you apply it is always gonna stay the same while you're in the tree. So don't change up your how, but you can change up your colors and your, you can change up the pressure too. Hopefully that makes sense, all right? We're also gonna do this all the way down over here. Same thing, all right? I'm just gonna do it fairly quickly just to get something down. Get some yellow going. Actually, I'm going to do this whole thing 
and then I'll show you why later, all right? So do this whole area down here and this whole bit the same way you did that, okay? This tree is a little bit, or these bushes are a little bit further away than that, so I'm gonna hopefully do it a slightly smaller scribbles to make it look like it's further away, okay? And it's gonna take you a little longer, but if you scribble smaller, it gives the illusion that it's going back in the distance, okay? So these are a little bigger scribbles. These are really teeny tiny scribbles, okay? If you hear a little squeaking in the background, I'm sorry, that's my dog. She's in the basement and wanting to come out. So I apologize for that if you're hearing that. There she is. Okay. Now, as we get down here, you can go more smooth, okay? Just add smooth color down here because we're gonna do a different texture here in a minute. So transition from little tiny little scribbles over here to smooth scribbles or smooth lines down the bottom, okay? Again, it gives it a different, as you can see, it makes it look different, right? Now I'm gonna make this tree a little darker, add some brown in there. And again, if you squint your eyes at anything and you say, okay, where is it lighter? Where is it darker? Same thing here. It's a little darker in here. So I'm gonna make it a little darker in there. Stop thinking about what it is and actually look at the shape and the value of it, the lightness and darkness. That'll help you to capture what it is you're looking at. If you can stop labeling it and just start looking at shapes, right? So I'm not gonna spend too, too much time over here. You guys are just gonna keep working this, keep modeling it, keep scribbling, make it nice and small little scribbles. Make it look like a different kind of a tree over here, okay? Hopefully that makes sense and then we'll come back and we'll do our grass in a minute and then that's just about done. All right, my paint friends. Good, we're doing good on time. I feel like I'm sprinting. <laughs> All right. Just washing my brushes. Let me grab a brand new napkin here. Okay. This needs to be dry. If it's not dry, dry it with a hair dryer. Okay. We are now going to do this big tree over here, the first layer of it. And I'm gonna use, just like we did over here, we did the mommy brush that really fanned out fluffy mommy, this one. We're gonna do the same thing over here, okay? Now, green is really, really, really see-through. I wanna show you. So if I do this, you can see through it that there's still a barn behind it and sky, right? You can see the line between the two. So in order to get rid of that, add a little bit of white to your green. Think of white like white out, okay? So now it sort of blocks that edge so you don't quite see that sharp edge line between the sky and the roof line, okay? So this first layer is gonna be sort of a lighter green in areas, darker green in others, all right? So I'm just going to, again, dot, dot, dot. Now, it's kind of like a stamp when you dot it, right? You push really hard, you're gonna have that sort of a stamp. You push lightly, you're gonna have sort of a messy um, print, which is what we want. We want that really light on the edges. You want it to be pretty light. And you're gonna rotate your brush around to get different imprints, different stamps of leaves, all right? We're just going to add lightly over here. And make sure you rotate your brush so you don't get the same kind of stamp every time. It looks different as you go. Okay. And again, a little bit of white to hide, hide the transitions from red to brown, from brown to yellow. Up here, I'm going to add some more white. There we go. We're going to go back into our green. We're just putting in a base color for our tree. 
making the edges really blurry by making sure we're pushing, stamping lightly. So we get that edge of our tree really blurry and kind of rough, right? So push light, very, very lightly on the edge, very small pushes. And then you can do it real big and heavy out here. All right, and out here, I'm gonna make this a slightly darker green, which means I'm gonna do brown and green together out here on this side. It's okay if you have some areas where the sky is kind of popping through, because when you look at a tree, at the edges of a tree, you will see the sky. It's not as densely uh, thick with leaves at, at this point out here, over here. Again, this is just our under uh, coat of green just to get kind of get rid of what's behind it at the moment. So the barn and the sky. I'm putting more white in here to get rid of that red and try to make this all look solid green as opposed to the brown of the building or the red of the building. Here we go. And don't forget to go around your edges, okay? So as you can see, it's like a light green or a dark green, weird kind of colors, but that's okay. That's just phase one of this big tree over here, okay? All right, we're now going to start in on this lovely silo. Okay, hopefully it's dry. If it's not, hit it with a hair dryer. We're gonna start adding light on this side and dark on this side. Same way with the smile shape. But this time, we're gonna do it with one of your medium brushes, okay? One of these brushes. I have, this one's more of a pointed brush. Um, I call it my mommy brush, but um, same technique. You're gonna come down from the left side, pull it in, do half a smile this way with a light brown all the way down. Then I'm gonna come in from the right side with a darker brown doing half a smile coming in that way, okay? So light brown, brown with a little bit of white. That's too much white, there we go. Just a little bit lighter, we don't want it like way, we don't want it skin tone because then it won't look like the brownstone that was on the picture. So maybe coffee with just a little bit of cream. How's that? All right, so we're gonna start on the left here. Do a little bit more. Start down the left, just a little, start with just a little bit of a line and then you're gonna start to kind of flick it to the right. Again, smile, right? We're doing half a smile. Start with your straight edge down a little bit and then drag it across. You want to sort of run out of paint as you're running across, okay? And that's okay if you run out. At the end of the day, we don't want this to look like a straight line, like you painted the straight line first. We're gonna interrupt it enough and drag enough paint away from it that it just looks like a bunch of highlights on the left side. Even down the bottom, you're gonna flick it. The bottom part of your smile down here is off the canvas. So just continue that same, that same process, all right? So that's my highlights. If you want, at this point, we can do it across the middle. 
I'm gonna grab straight brown and I'm gonna do little smiles left and right. Straight brown. And I'm not going to the complete edge of my silo either. So I'm just gonna do a little smile right in the middle here. Same kind of a smile. You don't wanna go a real deep smile, right? On mine, you're doing a very gentle smile. I'm doing brown here, all right, back and forth. I'm not going to the edge though. I'm leaving that edge really highlighted, okay? And now on the right side, I'm gonna do a slightly darker brown. Again, brown with a little bit of black in it, all right? Brown, a little bit of black, not much. And on this side, again, very, very, very little black. Black and red are the two most potent colors and they will take over very quickly if you're not careful, okay? And on this side a little bit. And do your other half of the smile over here. Now, I don't know if you notice, I just did a little trick. I put my pinky down on the canvas. Hopefully you can see that. I'm trying to get you guys closer. There you go. Still see the barn. All right. To keep, keep some, some stability on my hand when I'm drawing a straight line, I rest it on something. So you can take another paintbrush and then rest your hand on the paintbrush if you wanted. You can rest your hand on the edge. If you're doing it down on the table, you can rest it on something like that. Or like I just did, I put my pinky down or your hand down if you want to draw your straight line down. As opposed to trying to get a straight line up here, it's hard to control it. Okay, that's sort of a little trick. Okay, it's much better if I have control this way. I'm also much better drawing a straight line if I go left to right. All right, and I'm gonna flick it sort of in a smile shape to the left. Start with this dark brown, and you drag it across in one direction, right? I'm only flicking from right to left in that half a smile shape. Okay, and that's how you make the silo look like a cylinder. It's that smile. How you apply the paint. There it goes, crooked, sorry. All right? All right, you guys work on that. I'm gonna finish the drawing over here with our paper folks. All right, so this green grass is more of a yellow green. So I'm gonna, that's all I'm gonna pick up is that yellow and that green. I'm not picking up brown. Try to fix, there we go, yay. I have that brighter green too. That finally, I just got peeled. All right, so I'm gonna use these three colors. So I'm gonna do the yellow, the light green, and then the regular green. And again, these are just flicks straight up, just like you would think, but I'm going to just do a bunch. You can't see it with that, so here you go with the dark green. And same direction or same um, same with the paint. So we're going to come up straight a little bit. Some are going to be a little longer. Some are going to be a little shorter. Some are going to arch. So if you notice, some are straight. Some arch over this way. I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully you could. All right. Some kind of curve a little bit this way. Some curve a little that way. And if you flick it, the reason I have you flick it and I have you start at the bottom and work your way up, it's all about the pressure you use, all right? So you're gonna push hard at the bottom and then as you flick it, it gets less pressure as you come up and you're able to get more of a point. Here, I'll show you. Even with my crayon, it was thicker here and more of a point at the top. So, same thing with the paintbrush is the pressure you use makes a difference on the mark it makes, right? So if you go, right, see how thick it is down here and it's thin up there, same thing. So you're gonna wanna flick. 
some shorter thick, some shorter flicks, and some longer flicks. Here we go. Okay, so go right, some go to the left, and that's all you're gonna do, guys. This is your last step, is to layer it up. Lots and lots of blades of grass. You can start off your paper, like on, on not the table, but put another piece of paper underneath it and start off your paper so that it's way it's really dark down here, like really dark. You don't see the spot of where you started your flick. That will help. Okay. Some lighter colors coming in. Start always start with your lightest color. Always start with your yellow. Then go to your light green. Then go to your dark green. Because it's hard to put make a darker color light with pencil once you're done. All right. If you end up with this happening here, I just noticed it when I looked in the camera. Again, perspective, right? I didn't notice it when I'm 12 inches, but I did notice it on the camera. <laughs> you see this. In reality, this ground underneath the silo would be dark, okay? The darkest part of anything is right where it's touching the ground, right? So the shadow of it. So go ahead and add in darker green or even brown to mimic the ground underneath the silo and underneath the barn, okay? And it would fade. So you're going to kind of ombre it and shade it so it's fades out to yeah, make it a little darker. Um, but I'm going to go up and down and make it look like grass under here, guys, okay? So underneath, to make it look like it's sitting on the ground, you want to darken it down, okay? And you can add your grass and whatnot back there also, growing up in front of the silo, right? That looks much better. Much better. <laughs> okay, it looked like it was floating for a minute there. All right, this is how to get it to actually look like it's sitting on the ground. It has weight rather than floating in the air. Okay, so you're going to add some brown in the, sh the way I'm doing grass, the same way. The blades of grass are up and down, right? Because that's grass way out there. And then I'm going to have my blades of grass on top. There we go. You might not be able to get this really, really, really bright green if you're, especially if you're using a lot of this regular medium green color, but that's okay. It still looks like grass. Okay. You just keep building up your grass. You kind of see this here. I'm almost done with this little section here, right? All right. So that, my friends, is the drawing. Obviously, mine is not finished. Yours will be, hopefully. Okay, and I can't wait to see them when you submit them. All right. All right. Let's finish up our painting. All right, we got, looks like 30 minutes. Good. We're going to need it. Okay. So from here, this is still wet. So as this is drying, let's work on some of the details over here. All right, all of the white and what makes the barn actually look like a barn, right? So in our heads, we know this is white paint on the barn. However, when you paint it, it's not bright white. If you try to paint this bright white, it'll look wrong. So we are going to have, if you think about a value scale, so if black is a number eight and white is a number one, we're going to color all of this here around the window and this outer edge of our trim, we're gonna paint that maybe a two or a three kind of a gray, okay? This in here is going to be more like a five, six maybe, okay? Although again, we know if we're up on a ladder painting this, it's bright white. However, in this instance with this lighting, let's make this maybe a two, Okay, and this may be a five, all right? Again, eight is the darkest, it's black, one is white, all right? So hopefully that makes sense to you. Baby brush. This is the tiny little detail brush, okay? 
We are going to mix up, I'm going to first use it, mix it with a different paintbrush so I can make a, a bunch of it. All right, so a bigger paintbrush, I'm going to make white. I'm going to make a five and a two, right? Value. So basically a medium gray. Feel free to make all the grays if you don't know if this is a five or not. Oh, I just pulled the wrong color. All right, get some more white. So this is kind of a, that's more like a four or a five. All right, now I need a little bit more white because I ran out of paint. Hang on. And now I'm going to mix a two. Ah. Right, so now that I have my five on my hand, my brush, you guys can see that's okay. I'm going to mix more of a two over here. There's a lot more white. Oh, don't mix that way. Okay, so now I have my one, that's maybe a two or no, a zero, right? One or a zero is the white. This might be a two or a three. This might be a five. That's an eight, right? Black is eight. All right, so let's start with the number two value. So just a, a light gray, okay? So light gray and medium gray, right? So light gray. This is where you're gonna wanna make sure you have your hand touching something, either this, or if you're down, you're gonna to wanna to have your hand resting. Think of a couple of things before we go. Think of your baby brush like a pencil. Choke up on it like a pencil and literally hold it like you hold your pencil, like you're gonna write, okay? So you're gonna draw with this right now, not paint. All right, where some of these other brushes, we were back here with the handle and we're doing big brush strokes, not with this one, all right? You also want to make sure your hand is resting on something, like I said. So you can either have your paint, another paintbrush, and do this. If this is completely dry, like it should be, you can actually rest your hand right on it. All right. Let me go a little better. All right. So with the number two gray, that light gray, we are going to outline our door, outline the outside of this triangle, but I'll show you how to do that over here, all right? So first off, hopefully you can still see your pencil a little bit, okay? You're gonna wanna go across, and then down around the door. And you can probably see the way you painted it too, the direction of your brush strokes, right? My door here is gonna be a little more tall and thin which is okay. All right, if you run out of paint, that's okay. You can put another brush stroke of paint down. Now, really cool trick, I don't know if you guys know this, you can erase paint if you catch it fast enough. For example, I've got a little bump there that was a little thicker than I wanted it to be. Grab a napkin, water, watch this, wipe it right off. All right. Ooh. Now, you got to be careful, like I was not just now. <laughs> if the paint is still damp, it will pull off. So be very careful. You can't go scrubbing horribly and, and, you know, really fast. But you can fix a little mistake if you make it. You got to catch it quickly. Wet, clean, wet, clean water napkin. Okay, and that's how you sort of fix it. Then you dry it, blot it, and you can come back and do it again. All right, and again, this is our number two gray, our, our light gray. I'm going to paint the door. All right, I'm also gonna paint down the side of the barn and rest your hand so you get a much better control over your brush. Go slow. And 
then we're going to come down the right side of our roof line, right between the red and the black. All right. I'm actually painting on the red right now, not the black. All right. Now, this line across here, that's a number five gray, so don't do that yet. All right. I'm going to grab some more of the number two gray, light gray, and I'm going to come down. Now, there's my red, right? It went right up to the black point, but I'm going to point something out to you guys. In perspective, the way it's, way it's, um, the building is built, the roof line actually is sticking out further than the siding. So we're going to paint all of these lines here on top of the red. It will give the illusion that it is an overhang. Okay, so the roof overhangs the siding. All right, I'm trying to get that in the picture. Why don't I just do this? There we go. Is that better? You guys can see that, okay? The roof overhangs the siding. So our number two gray, I'm gonna do right on my red. Okay. Right there. right next to the number two, which is this line right here, is a dark line. So we're going to do a stripe of number five, so medium gray. So we have a light gray here. We're going to do a medium gray right next to it, and we're going to come right up to this edge here, okay? Now this is an upside down V, right? So we painted it up here and then down here with the number two value, light gray. This medium gray does not interrupt the V. The V is still there. So if you lose the V, we can come back and add it again. Okay. So grab your medium gray, like at number five on the value scale. All right. Again, eight being black, one being white. And I'm going to draw another line here. It's going to be darker. Mine is not a number five. It's more of a four. A little darker so you guys can see it. There we go. So draw a line. A line of dark grain already. It's looking like it's an overhang just a little bit. If by chance you did what I did and you paint over the roof of the silo, we can come back in later and do and overpaint that again. All right. So this edge right here, if you accidentally do this, I'll help you fix that in a minute. Okay. Make sure I got enough paint on here. I make this line of gray, this medium gray a little bit wider than I did the edge, all right? I'm gonna go now go back to the light gray and I'm gonna do one more line of light gray. This is the molding now that's on top of the siding, okay? Too light. What happened to my light gray? So you're doing three lines on the diagonal following the roof line. And this will give the illusion that the roof overhangs the siding. And that's the easiest way to do it. Okay. And again, I will show you how to fix the ends of our lines right here in a, in a couple of minutes. All right, let's finish doing our, the details of our barn. All right. So again, the light gray, number two value. We're now gonna draw in our windows, okay? So you should still be able to see your pencil lines a little bit. If you don't, you can draw them back in right now if you want, okay? I'm 
draw rect two rectangles. I'm going to try my best to make them as exact as possible. Okay, that's the center. Identical, right? So the bottoms line up. The sides line up with the side of the door. Tops line up. I'm going to draw it with a number two light gray. Okay. I'm sure I'm not running out of time. Okay. All right. I always make my second window too short. Okay. Now, so just draw the molding. These are more square than that one. That one's more rectangle. That's okay. All buildings are different. I want you to color in black right now. So go ahead and wash your baby brush. We're going to make the windows black. The glass of the windows is black. While that's drying, we'll go do a couple other things. Again, rest your hand on the canvas. Be careful, you just drew, you just painted the white of your door trim. Careful not to smudge that. I typically do that. <laughs> I don't mean to, but I do it a lot. And if you went too wide on your black, we can come back and redraw, which I'm going to have to here, um, our molding around our windows. While I still have black on my brush, I'm going to draw my spire here. And I'm going to fix the edge of my roof too. All right? So I have the black. I'm going to literally, this is just a straight line up. That's it. With a sound effect, apparently. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right. Fix this edge. And again, I'm going to paint it in the same direction. That sun ray, right? Coming down from the point. There we go. Back in front. Edge. Making sure that's kind of dark over there. There we go. Much better. We're going to let our windows dry a little bit. Wash your baby brush. I'm going to go grab right here. I'm going to grab my medium gray and add a line between my roof and my side of my barn. And it'll make it look like this piece of wood is on an angle right, in the shadows. Again, our brain knows that this was painted with the same exact color as the rest of the barn. However, to look at it in the photo, it's a darker color, okay? All right, so again, waiting for, that? got stuck in my paint and it's white. Hang on. Here we go. Oh, I just did it now, didn't I? <laughs> Repaint it. All right, much better. Sorry, I'm a perfectionist. I'm not type A, but I that I joke about all the time. That that would be me. All right. So while we're waiting for the windows to dry, I'm going to show you guys dry brush technique again, how to make the like, streak some brown across this to make it look more weathered rather than just a bright red um, paint job over here. This is like too bright. It's like Crayola, it looks like kids color, which is fine, but too bright for me. So I'm gonna tone it down a little bit. Grab your flat big brush again, all right? Put on a little bit of brown paint Wipe it off, because it's dry brush technique, okay? Wipe it off, and then you're just going to drag 
across. I'm kind of flicking it a little bit. And because you don't have a lot of paint, it's not gonna leave a lot. And if you flick it a little bit into the green, that's okay. Okay, you can easily wipe it off. We're just giving it sort of a, a stained effect. So that's what dry brush with brown kind of looks like stain. And that's what we want, just to tone it down. You can already see a big difference between the top of the barn here, and the bottom, just it takes the red and brings it down a notch. So it's not so fire engine screaming Crayola. And if it's uneven, that's even better. It makes the barn look old. Weathered. There we go. Much better. There we go. <laughs> All right, and I kind of had a heavier chunk of brown a little bit there, but that's okay. And to me, it just looks like weathering. All right. Back to our windows. Mine are dry. If yours aren't, hit it with a hair dryer. All right. Go back to our colors. I'm going to go back to my number two gray, my light gray. And I'm going to put in, fix my um, molding first. And then I'm just going to do a plus sign in there, right? Very lightly, light, 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 light pressure, almost not even touching the paintbrush to the canvas, okay? Control the pressure and you'll control the size of your line. Almost no pressure whatsoever. And it gets you a very, very, very thin line, okay? Now, last two things. There we go, try to get the camp, there we go. We're going to add one more layer of green up here in the same way we've been doing it. Da, 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 da. And then flicking paint lines down here. All right. I'm just, again, trying to pay attention to the time here. All right. We've got 15 minutes. We should be having enough time so I can show you both. All right. Back to the fuzzy round brush. I need more napkins. I'm going through napkins like crazy today. Dry it off. And we're gonna go, this time, I'm gonna go between the light green, regular green, and dark green. Kind of same as here, but my light green instead is gonna be green with white instead of green with yellow. All right, or you can do green with yellow if you like that color combination, that's fine too. So let's just do the same thing we did. What is that? Got something stuck in my paint. All right. And you can let some of this paint layer shine through, all right? So some of that dark areas, we're gonna see some of those pop through. So some of our paint is gonna be two layers thick or maybe three layers thick. Some's only gonna be one, okay? So you're gonna go back and forth. Again, very careful, very light tap, light pressure on the edges. And you're gonna maybe add a little bit of white. Let's see what we get here. And you're adding texture to our make it look like leaves, okay? Smaller dab, 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 dot, dot, dot. Rotate your brush around a little bit. You should now be able to hide pretty well the line between the sky and the barn right here, this line right here, with the second layer. If not, feel free to let this dry and come back with another layer. There's, nobody says you have to only do two layers, okay? Same thing with the barn. If it's too see-through for you, after this video with us, go ahead and go back and add another layer. Same thing with the silo, same with everything. Um, you don't have to stop at just two layers. Now you know how to do it. Go ahead and have fun with it, right? I'm gonna add a little bit of darker green. If 
but again, I'm letting some of that first layer shine through. So I'm not covering it completely, okay? Maybe I'll do some yellowy green, see what that looks like on some. If this is all one tree. You're gonna have it all pretty much the same color like don't do a chunk of yellow down here and not do yellow up there. You're gonna to wanna to have the same colors that you're working with throughout this whole section. Like over here in this section, I did, I had yellow, yellowy green, right? Yellowy green and then brown green. Over here, I had white green and a little bit of brown green. I didn't have any yellow in this part, but I did over here. So if you do wanna add yellow, to the tree, the big tree in the front, just make sure you do it consistently, not just one little splotch, okay? Right. And then the last step is our flick. So, Oops, napkin fell in the water, hang on. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use two brushes for this. You're gonna go back and forth between, both of them are pointed. I have a bigger brush and a smaller brush, okay? Now, again, it's all about how you apply it and the pressure you use. Same thing with the coloring with the crayons, right? So with this one, you're going to hold it, either one, whether it's a baby brush or the mommy brush, either size. I hold it like this and I just move my wrist. As I move my wrist, if you can picture the canvas here. So if this is my painting, turn it sideways, right? This is how I'm painting. So down here, I'm pushing on my painting. Okay, pushing on my painting. But as I come up, there's less and less and less pressure. Do you see that? Here I'm pretty close to the painting, so my bristles are bending. But as I turn my wrist up and flick it, kind of, it's getting less pressure, less pressure, less pressure, less pressure. That will form a point on the top of your grass, okay? So I'm gonna start this grass, we're doing light green, so green with white, green with yellow, and green. So those are our three colors that I'm using for the grass. Green with white, because we need the coverage, right? Green with yellow, because we want the brightness, and then green to sort of tone it down a little bit, because the green with yellow is really bright. All right, so let's make a light green, green with white. 50-50, maybe. Okay, I'm going to show you. If you sit and put the same pressure on your brush all the way up, it's going to look like that. That does not look like a, a piece of grass, right? That's continuous, same pressure all the way up. Now, let me erase that because we don't want that. We want it to get less pressure as we go, all right? All right, so again, more pre again, I'm gonna flick, right? Here, let me pull this down a little bit, there we go. Okay, more pressure, and then as I come up, it's less and less and less and less, and then you're gonna get more of a point. So see how it's wider down there? The point up there. If you're not sure about this and you wanna practice it somewhere else, on a palette or on a napkin or on a piece of paper, you can do that. Again, it's just that sm smooth, I typically do it with my hands, but it's the same with the wrist or you can do it with your fingers. Okay, so my fingers, I flick. So more pressure at the bottom, less at the top. All right, so there's the green with white, green, and then green with yellow. And that's all the directions that I have for you, all right? I'm going to continue doing this. You're just going to do this over and 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 over. Okay. So here's the green with yellow. 
I'm going to make sure that the, at the bottom it's pretty thick. So I like to start at the bottom, flick my way up. Being sure that I have some that are kind of off to the side, right? Some go sideways, some go straight up, some go to the left. And you're going to want to go back and forth because this one is going to get you a much, much, much finer point. You can do the whole thing with this. It's just going to take you a while, okay? The whole, the small little brush, right? And you can get much finer little lines. All right, so look at the thickness. All right, there we go. The thickness of these lines I did with the bigger brush, the thickness of these lines I did with this small little brush. So that's it for directions, like I said. So when they have to cut the video off, you at least know all of the directions, okay? I'm just now taking time to do light green, and I'm going to go up and interrupt the, I want to hide most of that brown down there, right? You can't really see it. You see it a little bit, but not a lot. All right, so I'm going to flick a lot of this. Where'd my green go? A lot of this light green. Cover, really heavy duty coverage down here across the bottom. So Lauren, how we doing? And Emily, how we doing? Any questions? Um, we have one question if you have some extra time about just how to um, make bricks on the silo. Okay. I can address that a little bit later. Let's get the rest of this grass going. You're going to want to basically do that same smile, but you're going to want to almost measure down the side because all the bricks are the same size. Um, so you would take your ruler and mark with a little pencil every, I don't know, every, the same, the same um, measurement all the way down, right? So you put a little line and then you'll, that's where you're going to start your smile. So you want to make the illusion of bricks and not have to sit there and do every single one because this whole thing is more of a impression rather than absolute um, realism, right? So for example, once you have your predetermined measured out, I'm just picking up, I'm just picking up a brown here, um, measured out, lines right so say i do it i'm just ballparking it okay you, you're going to do it more exact than me but same little lines all the way down because they're pretty big bricks if you look at the photo um they're not real tiny red bricks they're a larger stone that you're going to again sort of just do your lines across i'm going to have to do it darker because you can't really see it hang on all right, so you're going to want to go across in that smile shape, right, both sides, giving you, so I just did a couple little lines at the top there in black, right? Again, it's just the illusion that those, these are bricks, but you're going to need to go in that same half a smile, right, or partial, this one wouldn't be right. We, want, we need them all exactly the same. This is where it's a little harder to do it this way, okay? Because you want it to be more exact. Because bricks are exact, right? They're, they're all exactly the same size. So in order to do this, all right, then what you would do is just place a couple vertical lines every once in a while randomly around, not in any particular order and not... Um, does that make sense? That's the idea of it, okay? I would take my time and, like I said, measure them out. And you got to be careful of the um, angle of your smile, all right? 
as far as the perspective goes. So look at the photo of it to see first. Um, practice, I would also say practice on paper first. If you like it and can get it on paper, then go to the canvas. If you can't, then I would just leave it like this. Nobody will really know, you know what I mean? Because um, if you can't get that right, especially the curve of it, you're gonna get frustrated and you're not gonna like it and you, I don't want you throwing this whole thing away, okay? Um, so practice this on paper first, that's the concept, okay? and making it, just giving the idea that they're bricks versus having to paint every single little tiny brick. Um, hopefully, hopefully that works for you. That's the only question we had, girls. Yeah, that was the only question. Wow. That's cool. I guess I talked a lot, didn't I? <laughs> All right, so again, just come back in, add some more grass. You're gonna go across the whole thing with this. I might not have time to finish this. What time are we at? Yep, eight o'clock, exactly. So um, I know they're gonna be cutting me off about 8.15 with the max. So um, just, continue having fun playing. I will answer any questions. Send your emails to Emily or Lauren. Do you want to send them in the chat, your email box? So if they have questions, they can... Well, they already have it probably at the beginning and the end of this too, right? I'm sure. So again, if you're watching the replay of this and you have questions, send your questions to the girls at the alumni office and... Um, they will forward it to me and I'll be more than happy to have a conversation with you about it. Hopefully you guys had fun. I hope to paint with you really soon. And enjoy your summer. Get out, out and about, right? Get rid of this COVID thing. <laughs> I guess that's it, guys. All right, Erin, so we are about time. Any last minute tips or tricks you wanna mention before we uh, wrap up? Yeah, again, so if you're not liking what this looks like, add more layers to it, all right? Take your time, go back and make the barn more perfected if that's something you wanna do. Um, add more layers of, of the tree if you're seeing through it too much. If this didn't come out as good, I can't paint over it. That's what the beauty of acrylics is that you can put layer on top of layer on top of layer. So don't get too down on yourself. If this is your first time, it's okay. Next time you do it, you'll be better. That's the same thing with anything we do in life. So I want to say thank you to all of you for joining us. And um, again, have a great summer and hope we'll hopefully see you soon. Thank you guys. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Um, and next, it looks like next live event is coming up at 8.15 uh, p.m. Eastern time, which is a sunset yoga on Horse Barn Hill. So feel free to join back in on the main stage for that coming up. We'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.